thanks Kelly, thanks Ian and Jim and everybody else. So like, uh, psych, major look. I'm going to talk about monsters. That's my cue. Anyway, I'm going to talk about monsters because that's something I know a lot about. I've lived with monsters my whole life. As far back as I can remember, they invaded my, my waking dreams. My I'm supposed to be sleeping, I'm only four dreams. Dreams about me being whisked away by UFOs or pulled down the drains in the bathroom or perhaps held in a dark basement by some malevolent force that I couldn't get away from. So as soon as I figured out my opposable thumbs, I picked up whatever I could to make marks and I drew, and I drew the monsters because when I drew them, they had less power over me. But after a while, the, when the monsters keep coming and I'm, I'm still making monster after monster after monster, something else had to happen. When I joined the military and then became a social worker, I had doors open and my job was to help people deal with their monsters when they had the bad fortune to go overseas and serve in places that we as Canadians cannot even imagine how horrible they were on a daily basis. So my job was to try and take their monsters out of their minds. Unfortunately, some of them got back in the mind. When I went to art school, I had more monsters to draw. So that's what I kept doing. I kept making more and more monsters. And it did help. It helped make them less powerful. But after a while, I started wondering, what else could I do? Because it's not just me having monsters. I mean, they're with me all the time. They're here right now. This is Francis. <laughs> I decided that if I could poke fun at my monsters, they'd be even less powerful. So that's what I started to do. And I started to think about other monstrous things, not just in my own mind, but I know that some of us here in the room can think about things that wounded them to the day that, that haunt them still. Things about the monstrosities in our society where we can take a talent like Elvis and I turned him into a baboon. This is Homo Las Vegas. This is all my art, by the way. Um, as a way to poke fun at ourselves, but also to bring the serious, I think, issue of why we take such talent and squeeze the life out of a person, like they're in a zoo, like an animal. Why do we do it to animals? Um, this was my take on uh, Pavarotti. This is a Moderno man. But I, and I feel sad because he was another talent, another gift to our world taken too soon, and our monstrous society took him away. So this is my little kick at society. Our school has a lot of naked women which kind of ticked me off. So in my, my attack of sexism, I decided to make a nude man. See, he's got all the appendages. <laughs> <laughs> that was my way to try and deal with some of the times I felt hurt and dismissed simply because I had the luck to be born a woman. Um, I am living better pharmaceutically. So this is called art school exhaust. I found the only vent at art school. <laughs> and plugged it into a, you know, a dryer hose, and those were my prescription bottles spilling out of it. So I was poking fun at myself, and you know what, folks? It was helping. Dr. Seuss says that the more ridiculous we can let ourselves become, the more healthy we will be, and I really adopted that. This is another self-portrait called I Am What I Eat. It's shoestring licorice, life-size. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have all that licorice clogging up my bloodstream, but it's a way to look at the monstrous ways that I cope with my illness, by overeating, by hunter-gathering in my kitchen, by you know obsessing over food and gambling, all those kinds of things. Another piece that was sort of, you know, something I tried to make that was beautiful, but also a comment on how we adorn ourselves with falseness when we're trying to fill the hole inside of us. Um, this was a, a comment more on the monstrosity of how we treat our environment. I found a seal uh, skull on the beach, covered it with uh, industrial rubber, and I called it Rasta Seal, mm -hmm. just for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are the kinds of work that I continue to do. I also think about diversity, and a social worker that was really important for me to think about. I'm a white woman, I've got a lot of stuff going for me just because I had the good luck to be born white and Canadian. Someone who has an alternative sexual lifestyle, they need to do laundry too. So this is S&M laundry. <laughs> <laughs> um, at a time when I was feeling like I was going to burst anew, it splinter into many pieces. This is another self-portrait of aluminum. It's about nine feet tall, and there's well over a thousand rivets. So for me, it was a way to, because I think the earliest trauma happened to me in my life before, before I could speak, art has become my voice. 
and that's why I choose art, to express the things I cannot express. This piece called Systopia, again, is a comment, a comment on the hope that we often have entering into a new workplace, a new, way, a new place to live, meeting new friends, a new relationship. It's called Systopia. It's all cardboard, and when it gets wet and soggy, that's gone. That's not good to have in a relationship. Um, another comment on the monstrosity of our environment, this is called Pond Liner. It's about 100 feet of plastic sheeting around a pond. Sometimes I like to play with words and think I'm being very clever. <laughs> but anyway, actually that pond is now covered at the school. Another comment here on our environment, wouldn't it be wonderful if fishing nets picked out all the plastic that was in the ocean instead of taking all the fish. And I know there's a lot of people who have earned their livelihood through fishing, but I also know that one of the things I see most often on the beach is plastic and pollution, and it's everywhere. Poking fun at myself, I'm wearing 25 pounds of Twizzler licorice. <laughs> it was a pretty nice flapper dress, really. It was pretty sweet, and it smelled really good. But again, it was a comment, of, again, of, of the weight of the things that I carried as a social worker and the weight of the, the, the passion that you talked about earlier that I feel inside me to address these things. To poke fun at myself, if I have this diagnosis of a mental disorder, why can't I walk around town in my own straitjacket with all the stereotypes written about me? I did this in Victoria, and for some reason they wouldn't allow me in the legislature. <laughs> they, they said I was protesting because there was text on it. And I leave you with this final where I come to now is looking at ways for just self-acceptance. And what I encourage for all of us, if you're wrestling with anything, please be kind, because all of us are wrestling with problems. It's not my fault. And if you're wrestling with horrors and monsters like me, I'm guessing it's not your fault. And I think I've ruined your technology. Thank you. <laughs> There's a wave in the side. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kelly.